I'm Dr. Paul Dutrell at Toro Infirmary. I'm the Director of Maternal Child Health uh, for, for the uh, hospital. Um, here today to talk about C-section rates at Turo, uh, which are probably the lowest in the, the city, which if not the state. We run about a 14-5% primary section rate, so that's C-sections for first-time moms. Um, other national averages are about 21 plus percent. Um, and so we certainly have a 30% reduction on that, that overall stat, which is great because a lot of moms aren't looking for a C-section. C-sections run much higher risk of things like bleeding, infection, uh, problems with healing, sometimes bladder issues, bowel issues. So there can be long-term consequences to C-sections um, that people don't think about, that people think, all right, the immediate issue is I'm just having a C-section and this is how the baby's being delivered and I don't get that bonding experience. It actually has some long-term repercussions associated with it. I think one of the reasons that our section rate is so low here is that you have to have a doctor who is patient with the labor process. Um, C-sections are done for a variety of reasons, some of which include things that are necessary in terms of a C-section. Um, a bad presentation, so a breech baby. Um, sometimes there may be uh, abnormalities in the fetal heart rate. Sometimes there's issues with slow dilation. Sometimes there's um, issues where you have two babies and they have to be delivered by C-section. There are certain medical indications, certain medical conditions that can lead to a C-section and those are all warranted. The things that we can control are the things that help with our C-section rate and that again is patients and kind of allowing the, the labor process to go naturally and not rush into something that may not be necessary or warranted as long as the mother and the baby are fine. But for somebody who's had a previous C-section, the old adage was, oh, once a C-section, always a C-section. And we often hear that from patients. They come in and are, don't think they even have an option. And actually, they do have an option. They do have an option of trying to deliver vaginally. Now, certainly some patients are going to be more successful at completing um, what's called a VBAC, a vaginal birth after a C-section. Uh, than other patients. So if your first C-section was for something that is not likely to repeat itself, so a fetal heart rate abnormality, or maybe there were twins the first pregnancy, um, maybe there was some other issue that's not present in the second pregnancy that might lead to a more favorable uh, delivery, uh, meaning a vaginal delivery. Um, the benefits to delivering vaginally after that C-section is something that we've already talked about. So decreased risk of infection, shorter hospital stays, better bonding time for mom and baby because you have the opportunity to hold that baby in your arms right afterwards. So there's a lot of benefits to that. In terms of who is an appropriate candidate, you really need to talk to your doctor about that. Um, there are certain people who are great candidates and there's some people that may not be the, the most optimal candidate, but might still be able to try uh, and pursue a vaginal delivery given the right circumstances. Anytime someone has had a previous C-section, there are long-term consequences, again, long-term healing issues. So potential for scar tissue, there's potential for bladder issues, bowel issues, um, and just long-term scarring that can occur with a cesarean section. With multiple C-sections, yes, you do run even further risk of injury to those internal organs with a repeat, whether it's a C-section or any sort of abdominal surgery. Uh, so yes, it would be better to attempt a vaginal delivery after a previous C-section, really from those factors, and again, reduction in long-term uh, pain issues potentially as well from uh, multiple surgeries. I think that the way that we deliver care is unique and that we treat each person, each patient as a person. They're not a number. There's not a specific way of how someone's care is automatically doled out. And I have that conversation with every patient. So they're part of, they're part of the team. The patient is part of the team and part of that decision-making process. And so I sit down with every patient near the third trimester and say, let's go over your birth plan. Let's talk about what you're interested in, what is going to make this a great experience for you and also at the same time give you and yourself a happy, healthy baby.